So, thank you. Um, yeah, we'll talk about how PEP458 can protect uh, PyPy, but not only PyPy. That's our uh, idea here. So I'm Cairo, and here Martin. So let's get started. Yeah. Um, before talking about uh, uh, the PEP itself, we need to understand a bit. The nice thing is the uh, uh, talk was about uh, the malware in PyPI and what's PyPI. Actually, PyPI it's a um, a web uh, web platform that's built uh, with the name a warehouse, and uh, it has two uh, use case basically. First one is developers that want to share their software, their libraries, so they make it public in PyPI, and we uh, install it using people. Most of you uh, have done this. So yeah, we have the client side uh, at, that will be for two, actually, for the developers and the users. And uh, to, to show how important it's PyPI, let, I will give some numbers. So PyPI has uh, more than 550,000 projects, 700,000 uh, users, and it serves uh, daily 900 terabytes and 2 billion of requests. So who was in the previous talk can be how this 0.5% is big. So um, yeah, so when we talk about uh, PyPI, uh, PyPI is a distribution platform, but in the end, it is a repository, right? Serving things to, to download. And uh, why should we protect repositories? So Martin will continue. We are protecting repositories because they are high value targets. As Carl already said, the repositories are something we all rely on for our daily jobs, and our users expect that we are going to build security, uh, secure packages, products, and so on. And the question we should ask ourselves is what happens if an artifact is tampered, if changed somewhere, uh, somehow is modified? And logically speaking, who are, who are the vulnerable ones? The first level, uh, the, 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 the people who will be directly vulnerable of a tampering package, of course, are those who are directly rely on our project. But what is even more scary is that it doesn't end there. Many times the vulnerabilities are such that the vulnerability can, can be shown in transitive dependencies as well. So you, if you, as we, have saw, as we saw uh, on the previous talk, when you uh, rely on a vulnerable package, you can, you can have the, pro the problem yourself as well. So what is a traditional way to protect a repository? Of course, sign all the artifacts. <laughs> Given how hard it is, it's a big cost you, uh, you, you take, but w when you sign the, all of the artifacts, what is really good is that you receive a checksum for each of the artifacts. So if your users are, um, are um, careful, they could notice if a package was tampered. That's good, and it was a solution for many repositories, but sadly, there are many problems with it, and Car will share more about it. So, uh, yeah, signing artifacts, it's not enough. It's the picture, it's an illustration for that. But why signing repositories are not uh, enough? I will uh, give you some uh, case here, let's say. Let's say that you have a key uh, that's uh, signing your uh, package, and probably some people in the organization has the key to do the signing. And what happens if someone leaves the company? So yeah, this key become a bit vulnerable. So, and let's think about the other, other case. What is the key get compromised? Okay, it could be because someone leaves the company and has access to that, that uh, key, or just the key was leaked, right? Uh, and this is not something uncommon. If you see uh, this uh, uh, news here about that, one uh, key was uh, leaked, and uh, it was um, about two months ago. So all the updates get uh, compromised in that case. So, um, but we have a solution for that, right? You generate a new key and resign everything. So it it looks okay, but let's let's. Think in a scale, right? Um, what you if you have millions of packages like PyPI, eight million packages, eight million artifacts, you need to sign everything again. But remember, we usually you need to have 
CDNs, mirrors, everything needs to be uh, 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 synchronized across the world. And sometimes the, the mirror is offline, it would take more days to get synced, okay? Um, this is what happened with uh, Debian, there are a lot of mirrors. Mirrors in some universities that nobody is taking care, uh, of course someone is taking care, but not like a company holding that. All right, um, and how you, don't, you notify the, the users about the new key? Because you have a new key, but what would happen with the user, they would just fail to download, because then they need to pick up the new key, sometimes update their system or do something. All right, um, so then we come with uh, TUF. Before explaining PEP458, let's understand TUF. TUF is the update framework, and this has the, a good solution framework to solve uh, uh, the problem with uh, the signature. It signs everything, so that's a good solution, right? And of course, Cairo, not of course, but Cairo here is wrong, specifically in this situation, because TUF actually doesn't sign everything, and that's the big difference as, the, uh, com as compared to a traditional solution. TUF signs only metadata files, and there are uh, a small number of metadata files you need for that. And what is really good is that TUF provides you with a clear process of key revocation, and the users can easily understand which are the new keys for which they should trust. And that's something they shouldn't do by themselves. This is something that TUFs do for you automatically. Also, it's really nice that TUF provides freshness, consistency, and integrity. And one can ask, how does TUF do that? Uh, do that? I would just say it well, uh, on a high level uh, because we don't want to go into too much details about TUF, but we would say that TUF has a verification policy. So each signature it has for an artifact it knows to say, it has this mechanism to say if this key is signed by, the, by a trusted authority or, it's signed, uh, or uh, if the, the key is still valid because there is an expiration for each of the signatures. And we have discussed stuff. Now let's say, let's say a little bit about PEP458. PEP458 is already accepted proposal, an old one to be honest, and it proposed a minimum design of TUF and how it can be integrated into Warehouse, or Warehouse is the software that, uh, that powers PyPI. It gives you a rollback and freeze protection, and uh, also it has, as, as we said already, in-band explicit revocation. This comes from TUF again. And the, the good part is that there won't, there won't be any particular changes for the user, so you just, as before, you install your package as it is. But the problem here uh, now comes that we have been dealing with, with this for a while and tried to implement this, and there was a PR which already did that. But as we saw, it's really hard to implement tough repository. And we'll hear from Cairo. Yeah, tough is tough, yeah. Uh, my first contact with uh, TUF was like, I was amazing about what it does, but when I start to work on this, it, in the PEP458, to be uh, honest, was very complicated, and I say, oh, this is really difficult, uh, and it's not better now. I'm working in that product, and I'm still struggling with that, but uh, okay, we need to do it, right? So the problem is the TUF specification is very complex to, to understand. And the specification mostly cover uh, the tough client part, not the, the, the repository side. So then, it, then you need to uh, understand some uh, behaviors of the client to build the repository. And this implementation uh, has really a high cost because you need to do a good design based on the view of the client. Uh, so you need to have developers working on that, maybe a project manager because this is not uh, an implementation that is done in short term. It's a long term implementation. And as this is a long term, it adds a lot of code base to your uh, to code to your code base, and it means maintaining bug and keep it in working. So, and uh, beside that, we have another problem about the tough process because you need to generate the metadata, sign it, to predate it, you need to do it in the correct way as designed by the specification. 
with the view from the client side. So, and it can lead a lot of inconsistency in that metadata. So then we uh, come up with uh, some solution for PEP for data. So we did implement the to PyPI. That was the solution. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I'm kidding. I, we did. We tried to do better than that. So, what we did, uh, uh, we originated in VMware um, uh, internal uh, open source pro not internal pro uh, open source project that actually from the very beginning it was uh, open uh, and public, and uh, uh, as soon as possible. Also, what we did, we donate uh, this project. It's under uh, Open SSF. That is also under uh, the Linux Foundation, so it is in it's now in a neutral organization. So, but of course, we have a draft PR now that implements PEP 458 with um, uh, our stuff. So it's still a draft, but we 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 are working on that. So, um, what was the motivation for the project that we want to talk now about our stuff? Of course, was PEP 458. Because when I was struggling with uh, uh, the PEP458 implementing tough repository in the, the really big environment that's warehouse, I said, okay, um, what if this effort can be used by others? Organizations, uh, companies, uh, other uh, repositories like uh, RubeGem or Debian. Um, so, and uh, actually I was with this thinking and uh, UC uh, that is a, uh, from Google in a tough maintainer. He came last uh, open uh, source summit uh, here in Europe and said that uh, repositories are more alike than they are different. Then it, it uh, was the reason of uh, this product actually. So what we tried to do in that product is uh, abstract the tough specification complexity, make it easy to, to adopt our stuff, uh, adopt tough using our stuff. So of course, as I said, I always struggle with understanding tough. Luckily, we have some tough experts uh, helping us to this. Lucas from the New York University is a tough uh, uh, maintainer and our stuff as well. Uh, we have Joshua uh, that is a tough maintainer and UC that I mentioned. Uh, they are really uh, working as uh, contributors and maintainers and, and uh, advisors for, for us. And we have also here and our friend Costas, say hi, Costas, that is also a maintainer for the project. Yeah, I, I want to do this with you. <laughs> so what is about the design of our stuff? Yeah, we want to make it easier to, de to deploy. So how we de deliver this is container image and a command line uh, tool, because we want that also scale uh, and uh, keep the consistency of the metadata. That's because I we put these words together, scalability and consistency together, because you cannot scale and make the, the metadata inconsistent. And we want to make it easy to integrate. So all the integration uh, in a repository or a distribution system or platform is done through the uh, REST API. So to explain how the API integration works, uh, Martin will take over. So our stuff can be put in many places because our stuff can be utilized and integrated through API calls. So I will give you first an example with a distribution platform. Warehouse can be considered a distribution platform. And the usual workflow in this situation is that you have your typical Python developer who pushes a package to Warehouse, Warehouse does some parsing, and then integrates it into the public repository. And in order to integrate our stuff into this workflow, you don't, you don't need to change any of the steps, you just need one additional process which will make an API call with the package information to the tough metadata. That's all. And this is, we speak from the server side, and then we will speak for the client side. Then I will give you another example. If you want to integrate our stuff in the CI CD, the typical workflow here is you have, you build your project, run the CI checks, and of course, run the CD to deploy it to your public repository. And where do you, where do you integrate our stuff? Well, in the, same, in, the, uh, with the, in the same way, you have a job, you have an action which just runs, the, uh, which calls the API and sends the information to existing RSTF deployment. Well, that's great, but let me show you 
a real example. This is from a demo repository we did, and we have tried it, tested it. It took something like 30, 40 lines uh, in the GitHub action to send the metadata to an existing RStuff uh, repository, uh, RStuff deployment, I meant. Um, and I can give you a link to the repository if you want to have a look, of course. But let's move on and think about a little bit. We have said that it's easy to deploy our stuff, but it's not only to deploy it, let's, let's speak about how you can manage uh, the our stuff operations. So um, the our stuff, uh, we are talking now about term, uh, tough management, that we need all the process like bootstrap, creating the first metadata, signing it, updating it, uh, do a key rotation if someone leaves the organization and you need to have a new key uh, to make it transparent to the, to the user, not affecting the clients. So we have delegations out. So this is very complex, so we are trying to abstract it with a, a very nice uh, 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 CLI. So that is what uh, Martin will show. So the idea is that we have the API and you can do more of the all of the operations through the API, but if you are new to Tuff, you don't understand the framework, you haven't used it, you can use the CLI and there is no requirement for previous Tuff knowledge. What is also nice, you have examples. What, what is bootstrap? What, uh, why do I need keys and what are those keys used for? Then when you understand better, it's nice that this is a step-by-step -step guided process. We ask you on each step what do you want to do actually. And when you decide what you want, in the end, we give you a summary. It's a little hard to see as I see it right now. It's, but the idea is that you have a summar the summarization of what you, you just created, the public value of the key, how many keys you're using, so you can have a better understanding of what's happening. And we can say that the way that our stuff was designed is with flexibility in mind and to, and to add as minimum as requirements as possible. That's why we can say that our stuff is artifact agnostic. What does it mean? It means that you can use our stuff uh, in your system to, I don't know, deploy uh, to, um, uh, so your users can download legal documents, maybe even movies, maybe even uh, whatever. You can, you can use it for everything. Also, we don't care what language you use to call our stuff, the our stuff API. So you can call it with, with all of those and of course others. Also, as we have mentioned, we don't also care how do you send, uh, how do you upload your artifacts to the public repository. There are many ways to do it. Choose one, but please just call the RStuff API in the correct moment. And finally, as we have already said and Cairo have said, we deploy RStuff as a set of containers. That way, it can scale and you can uh, use it with your orchestration tool or in on-premise, private, private or public cloud. And yeah, so and let's now hear about the main Arsta features. Okay, yeah, uh, now what we have as features are, you can bootstrap, start your uh, repository uh, with all the signing process. So of course, if you have uh, already uh, an existent uh, target uh, artifacts, you can import it. For example, PyPI, you can import uh, all the, the existent packages. You have an API to integrate uh, that do add, remove, and also you have the key revocation process. Uh, and also if you need to generate keys, it has a tool to generate the keys. So uh, now I will present to you how it's going on with uh, PyPI. So um, yeah. So the first part, it's like a, a, a developer that will upload a new version of uh, uh, a package. If you see here, um, it will use the Twine that usually used by developers to upload a new, a new version. Um, and the new version will be available uh, to the uh, PyPI. So the user will be able to, to see it uh, available. The, the new version, the beta is there. So uh, later on, uh, the user can download um, the PyPI using pip. You see that uh, it looks a bit different, the logs, because I'm verposing it now. You see just uh, the, the calls to the metadata, so it's val validating the signature. And let's see what happens if this get compromised, as we saw before. So what if someone go there and temp do a tempering in the, in the 
in the, the package. So let's say here I'm creating a, a fake package and that to the repository. What happens when the user will try to install it? So the user will download it and it gets an, uh, an error. Here the, the error is too uh, ugly, it's an exception, but this is what we want to show, is that you can see that there is a tough exception here saying that the metadata, it's not valid. And we are showing that the, the size is not matching with what should be in the metadata. Of course, PyPI also does this protection now, but this is just showing in a tough level. All right. Um, so implementing the client side is quite easy. That's uh, what we show here. It's, it's more or less using requests. Uh, as you see, the nice thing is to have everything built in. So, and uh, you can use this not only with Python uh, clients, but uh, you have uh, libraries like uh, uh, Go, uh, JavaScript, and others. So you could even protect a portal with that. So here, uh, Martin will tell how uh, the flow, the client works. So the flow that's from a client perspective consists of four steps. And the first, as we expect, is that the user wants to download an artifact from PyPI. Then, actually, before downloading the artifact, pip will download the tough metadata. The reason is, is that it will use that metadata to gather the information about this particular artifact, what it needs, what it, what it expects, and because this is signed metadata, if it's changed, it, the process will stop on step two. So we, we are sure that this metadata is trustworthy. And then after we have this trustworthy information about what to expect, we download the artifact and compare it against what we know. And now we want to share with you our future plans. We have discussed what we have until now, and we want to be even more flexible by first allowing more key vault and storage solutions, AWS, QVault, Azure as a storage solution, also Google Cloud and so on. We are open for su suggestions, of course. Also, we want to allow custom role delegation. The idea is to allow organizations to better, um, uh, better have control over uh, what, uh, how they uh, delegate the trust. And also, we want to improve the meta meta metadata management. And finally, this is an exciting feature we are working for, is distributed signing. This is really important for big organizations, international organizations, because currently, if you have an important uh, ceremony, you need to do it in-house, in place, physically. Right now, we're working to do it in a process to do it where, wherever you are. You can do it on uh, multiple steps. And we're excited to share with you that our stuff beta is out. It could be tried, we're, and we want, and we hope that you will see it, we will try it. This is a link to our documentation. Uh, we're open for questions, we're open for chats. Uh, and yeah, go ahead, Cairo. Thank you for uh, attending this talk. It's a, it's a new product, but we see a lot of uh, uh, benefit for not only open source products, but also for organizations, companies that want to provide secure download the date for the uh, data, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh Five minutes for questions, so uh, please raise your hand. If you have any questions, I'll come over and uh, uh, can ask anyone. Thank you for the talk. Um, so with the, the progress of the PEP and applying this to PyPy, um, how close are we to seeing our stuff being added to PyPy? Uh, sorry, can, can you ask again? I, I couldn't. Um, so you've been doing a lot of work with our stuff and, and working on the PEP. How close is that to completion? Are we going to be seeing this in PyPI anytime soon? Or? Yeah, that, that we uh, hope. To be honest, uh, this PEP, it's, uh, since it started to be created some more, more, more than 10 years. Uh, and um, yeah, but now we have uh, really, I see many organizations put an effort on that, not only uh, VMware, but the New York University and uh, uh, Datadog is helping us, everybody's trying to contribute in somehow. I see that soon we will have more results. Please follow the, the PR and uh, try to also help there. It's, it's, it's good. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks for the talk and for the tremendous amount of work this is, uh, seems to have been. Uh, I have a, maybe it's a very naive question, but you say that it was artifact agnostic. Do you see uh, our stuff working with something like Docker registry as, as well? No, do you understand it? No, so, sorry, can you repeat? Uh, can you repeat? Yeah, we're the final, yeah. yeah do, do you see uh, our stuff working with things like internal Docker registries? Uh, internal registries? Docker, for Docker images. Uh, for Docker images? Yes. Yeah, it could, it could be, as we said, it, it could be deployed uh, on premise. So it, it's, you don't have any limitations on how do you deploy our stuff. So you can do it, yes. We, and we can help you with advice or design or whatever. We will gladly help you with this. I will Thanks. complement also your question. I saw one user case for our stuff that it's uh, someone that uses a Docker uh, container image from a registry, but could be uh, a private one or a public one. So in, you could use the, your CI CD uh, instead to deploy, pull the image directly. It could uh, uh, use the metadata to fetch the image instead of fetching directly to the, to the repository. So you could use internally or in cloud as well. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, my question would be regarding some private repositories. Mm -hmm. So uh, as far as you probably know, uh, there are options like uh, GProg, Artifactory, and so on that are available for uh, companies uh, if they want to self-host their uh, project. Artifacts. Python, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, Python uh, package index. Uh, so, do you have any information regarding integrating uh, your, uh, your stuff with uh, such uh, products? Yeah, it's also uh, feasible because what you say, for example, to the configuration of our stuff, what's are my base URL where my artifacts are? So it will be the address for your JFrog Artifactory, for example, and the metadata and the client will know where to fetch it. Even if it's a, a JFrog, you can integrate it with a JFrog as well. Thank you. Any more questions? Cool. Um, so I see this working for organization because essentially you have a package that is signed by VMware and I trust VMware or no, it's, no. it's not like this. So I'm, how, how it will affect the user. So me as user uh, will contribute to a package and sign it how it will really work. Maybe I don't get really the, the connection there. Okay, yeah, the, the, the big difference is about uh, the signature that uh, before you actually use, you sign the package, you no longer sign the package, you sign the metadata. So as you a final user, shouldn't have any change because what we have is, the, the, what doesn't matter which uh, client you use, the client should first go to that metadata and then fetch the artifact. So it, there is no change for, for you, and also for, for who is uploading some package. Because uh, what happened is that for now, for that, the PEP458, the PyPI will sign the package for you. Uh, of course, the PEP480 that was shown before, uh, yeah, this one will be the leader of products. We have the delegation to also be able to sign. They can create a, a product, can create a core, a quorum, that uh, let's say you have three maintainers, at least two maintainers need to sign it, and then you, you sign it. Uh, just to add one thing, that uh, the metadata has hash and length of the artifacts, of each of the artifacts. That's how it protects it, because in, if you have a good algorithm to calculate your hash, you're good to go, so. And a good, of course, uh, key that you use, a good, yeah. So. Thank you very much. Uh, this is all the time we have. If you have any more questions, please shout to Cairo and Martin uh, on the hallways or on Discord. Um, have a nice day, uh, folks. Bye. <laughs>